Hello, my name is Terry White, Worldwide Design Evangelist for Adobe Systems, and I thought I'd take just a few minutes to show you my top favorite five things about Photoshop CS5. All right, so the first thing is better selections, impossible selections, fantastic selections that were much harder to do, if not impossible before. So the objective here is we need to move the horse over to the right. And of course, we're on a background layer. There is no extra horse to move. So we need to make a selection, duplicate that horse, and then fill in the old one. So the first favorite thing I have is I'm just going to go ahead and use the quick selection tool that I've saved before. We'll just grab a quick selection of the horse. Now I'm missing part of the tail, missing part of the mane, and even if I weren't missing those things, the quick select tool was never designed for both hard and soft edges. However, using the new refine edge command, I can now go in and turn on the brand new edge detection algorithms inside of this feature that will do a better job of detecting the edges and going out further, but I was just bad in my selection to begin with. I missed quite a bit. So I'm gonna use the new refine tool that will allow me to refine this edge even better to pick up those things that I missed and to do a better job. So it will go ahead just like magic. And oh my God, this is gonna be so great. And all of the things I do as a photographer and designer going forward. So we'll go ahead now. We've got the, the horse and the, or the mane and the tail much better. We already had a great job around the body. So now we'll just go ahead and click okay. As a matter of fact, we can actually output that onto a new layer right from this selection. So we get our new layer of the horse, great but we have the problem of the old horse that we need to get rid of. So how do we do that? Let's go ahead and talk about the second thing that I like about CS5 Photoshop, and that is we'll grab another quick selection. This one was done with the lasso tool. And as you can see, it's really quick around the horse, grabbing some of the background. And now we'll just hit the delete key. When I hit the delete key, that brings up a new option. Instead of filling it with just white or the background color, it fills it with or it allows me to fill it with content aware, meaning it will go in and calculate what would have been there had the horse never been there and fill it in accordingly. Amazing, amazing technology that's gonna save me time from here on out. Now we can turn back on our new horse, we can grab our move tool, and we can just simply move him over. Now we're not done with the horse yet. I'm gonna show you my third thing on the horse, but before we leave content aware fill, let me show you some other areas that I'm gonna be excited to use it in. And my retouching, for example, we wanna get rid of this cable out of the photograph. Well, typically I might use something like the healing brush, and if I do it the old CS4 way of doing this, I would grab the healing brush and I would just go ahead and start painting that line or that cable out. But the thing about the healing brush or healing technology in CS4 is when it crossed areas that were different contrast and corners, it kinda of left a blur behind, and I'd have to now go in and clone and fix all that stuff. So let's go ahead and undo that. Using the same tool, we'll turn on the new content aware option for that tool. And with that option turned on, we can now go ahead and do the same exact motion with the same exact tool. We're missing that little corner a little bit there. And now when we let go, it calculates it and figures it out with the content aware options. Amazing technology is just gonna make all my retouching jobs so much easier, so much more fun than ever before. I'm just getting a little carried away there, but you get the idea. So retouching with content aware fill inside the healing brush is going to be phenomenal. All right, next, let's switch over to this image. And this image, this is a typical panorama. And the problem is normally, because I didn't shoot it on a tripod and I just kind of went crazy here, I'd have to now crop off at least about 30% of my image or 40% of my image to, be, to get what's left over. However, not anymore. I can grab my magic wand tool, and with the magic wand tool, we'll just go ahead and hold down our shift key and select the areas that would have had to disappear, and now I'll just do the same thing. I'll hit the delete key, bring up content aware fill. It will figure out, based on the photo that's there, what it should fill in in those areas. This is just phenomenal, I love this. And yeah, I might have to fix this one little line here, but we've already seen we can do that pretty easily with the healing brush set on content aware. We'll just go ahead and paint that one line out. And we're there, okay, a little bit more there. Got it. 
All right, so content aware fill is going to be phenomenal. Now let's get back to the horse. Let's do our third thing, and our third thing is going to be the new puppet warp. We'll go up to the edit menu, we'll choose puppet warp. Oh, not content aware fill. Let's go choose cup puppet warp. And now that we have our puppet warp, I wanna make my horse look like it's prancing a little bit more. So we'll just add pinpoints wherever I want pieces of the horse to bend. Don't worry, no, no horse was actually harmed in the making of this demo. All right, so now that we've got this in place, we can go actually go ahead and pick the tail up now a little bit. Go ahead and raise it there. We're basically warping this object without having to do all the cloning and all the moving and all the things that we'd have to do before to get that effect. So just a quick use of the puppet warp to bend objects inside of a photograph. Now that's the third thing. What's the fourth thing? Well, we're gonna go over to Mini Bridge and although Mini Bridge is cool, it's not my fourth thing, but it gives me bridge inside of Photoshop. I still have regular bridge to go to, but now I get the best of both worlds. We're gonna go ahead and bring up this photo in Camera Raw. And now that we're in Camera Raw, we're gonna go ahead and zoom in on a part of this photo where we've got noise. This, this was shot in an insanely high ISO with a Canon 1D Mark IV and 12,800 ISO and just introduces all kinds of noise here. So no matter how expensive your camera is, you're gonna get noise at these high ISOs. So now let's go ahead and take a look at the new uh, noise reduction capabilities. So we'll just go ahead and switch on color noise and we'll just reduce the color noise right out of this photo. And once we get the color noise out, we can then, actually let's go ahead and turn on that new processing there. So we can go ahead and see a big difference we've already made in this photo. Here, we'll go back. That was the color noise we had. And we'll go ahead and reduce it. We'll also go ahead and reduce the amount of luminance noise. That's the other noise, the graininess that was left over. And just an amazing job keeping detail, keeping this photo intact. And of course, what people usually like to see is a before and after because you get used to good really quick. So now if I turn off preview, this is what we had and this is what we now have. So camera raw, love it, can't wait to use that even on some of my older photos. All right, so what's the last thing? And that is around HDR. So let's go ahead and select, get out of this. Let's go ahead and switch over to HDR. And of course we can grab multiple photos and we can now process them to HDR Pro inside of Photoshop CS5. So that will go ahead and process all of those images into an HDR composite. It will align them and give me my final result in the new HDR dialog box. Now I've got eight exposures here. These eight exposures, I can now choose any one of my presets. So I want this to look more saturated. I can of course go in and manu manually control all of this. I noticed some ghosting right here on this cable that was probably blowing in the wind. We even have a remove ghost feature that will take care of that for me. Now, beautiful HDR now possible inside of Photoshop. All right, so last but not least, what if you didn't shoot for HDR? What can you do? Well, I've got this one photo, this single exposure. We'll go ahead and do that, and we'll just go up to our image menu, and we'll go to adjustments. We'll come down to HDR toning, and this will allow me to simulate those cool effects that you would get with HDR without having to have the multiple exposures. Now, granted, it's not true HDR, but I can go ahead and get that really sharp look on regular photos with simple sliders. That's my time. Thanks for watching my five favorite things about Photoshop CS5. There's a ton more. You'll see it on my Creative Suite podcast as we go through the next 18 to 24 months. But I just wanted to quickly give you a look at what I really love about Photoshop CS5. Thanks for watching.